I just asked them an important question. What was your important question? Can y'all still smoke weed? Can we still smoke weed? Yeah, which is, I mean, which I, uh, I just want All right, to know. so let's read that again. Because he said we are only supposed to eat it. See, I didn't know that. She said we're only supposed to eat it? Yeah. see what God says about equality. Because most of our people going to try to vote for equality come up November the 3rd. Read. Hey. Oh. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. yeah. But thou art an holy people. God says the Israelites that are now called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in captivity, it says what? Thou art an holy people. He has separated us from the other nations. How? By how we act or how we should act from our origination. Read on. Unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. So when we say that the Israelites are a chosen people, that's what the Bible says. In this current day society, the white man or the Hispanic or the white man, the Arab man, Chinese man says that we're nobody. Right. No. That's why they're happy to see us in these conditions in the ghettos and the slums. But God says you're holy people. Right. Right. Come back to his law, statutes, and commandments so that you can live it in that way. Right. That's right. For well, thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God have chosen thee uh -huh. to be a special people. So let me ask my sisters over here, my sister right here. Our little brothers over here. What does it mean to be special? What does it mean to be special? Does anybody know? What does it mean to be special? Little man right here. Brother in the car, what does it mean to be special? It means that you're above everybody else. You're right. above all other choices. Right. There are 18 nations on the earth, but God chose the nation of Israel to be at the top. Right. So where's the equality in that? He says that we are a special people. Read. To be a special people unto himself. Unto himself. We're so special to the Lord our God that he named us after him. He gave us the abilities that are better than the other nations, and we see it on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. But somehow we use those abilities to create hatred in our neighborhoods, to create hatred for one another, because we don't really know how to love ourselves or who loved us from the beginning. Right. Read. To be a special people unto himself. Uh-huh. Above all people. No, we're looking for equality. Above all people. No, I, I, I'm cool being at the bottom. Read. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So all the other nations that are on the earth, the Bible says Wait. the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are above all people. Yeah. Right. Right. Nobody has ever taught that in your Christian church. Nobody wanted you to know that. Right. That's why they'll call what we do a hate group. Right. Because we're teaching our people what God says about you. Yeah. God says you are holy people. You are special unto him. Right. Now what does God require of you? To come back to his laws. Let's get that in Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Bring it out. Because we can show you out of the Bible who you are. How do we know that you're Israel? But we're going to show you how God feels about these uh, the Israelites. We're going to show you. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Uh -huh. right. And now Israel. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? So God says, those that are going to have a relationship with me, I require something of you. Bring it out. No one has ever said that in the Christian church. They say, well, just go to church, pay your tithes. Everything will be all right. Matter of fact, you don't really have to keep God's laws. When you die, we'll send up a prayer for you. That is what they teach in the Christian church. And you know what? Everybody is justified when they leave the Christian church. Because that's not the word of God. God says he requires something of his children. Right. Just like any parent Read. would. He requires something of his children. What does he require? Read. To fear the Lord thy God. So fear goes into respecting him because he has the world in his hand. He created you. He created the things around you. He can also create the evil that is around us as well. Read. God is all powerful. Right. So we have to give him that respect. Read. To walk in all his ways. So to walk in his ways shows that God is going to instruct us in how to live. How you doing, sis? What's your name? Bianca. Bianca, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So uh, 
we're, we're out here to teach our people who they are according to the Bible. Okay. All right? I just asked them an important question. What was your important question? Can y'all still smoke weed? Can we still smoke weed? Yeah, which I mean, which I, uh, I just want All right, know. so let's read that again. Because he said we are only supposed to eat it. See, I didn't know that. He said we're only supposed to eat it? Yeah. Like Let, let's 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 get that. So we 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 don't. We, I want Deuteronomy ten and twelve. Then we're gonna answer your question, okay? Deuteronomy ten and twelve. Deuteronomy chapter ten verse twelve. Uh -huh. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? God requires something of His children. All right. So when you look at this sign, this is what we were called in slavery. I mean, this is what we were called in slavery right here. I'm sorry, but this is what God called us from the beginning. These are our real names. This is our true identity. But God says he requires something of his children. To do what? Read. To fear the Lord thy God. To walk in all his ways. Uh-huh. And to love him. Uh-huh. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And how do we serve? How do we serve the Lord our God? Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Uh-huh. And his statutes, which I command thee this day for, what? for thy good. So the commandments of God that were given to the children of Israel are for our good. You understand Please. that? Because that, that, that is what the Bible is talking about through and through. When the Israelites keep commandments, good things happen. Right? Let's get 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Yep. Alright? So you ask the question about we. We just gonna jump straight to the to the deal breaker. Alright? Because Go ahead. You got it? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Read it up. is a commandment. All right, read. Know ye not that, you're, that you are the temple of God. So God just says that you are special above all people. The commandments he gave you are what make you special. And when you keep the commandments, therefore you are good. Right? Preach. So the Bible is just reiterating itself and says, do you not know that you are the temple of God. You represent God. Everything that you do, whether it be bad or good, you're still going to be known as an Israelite. Right. But God wants you to do the commandments for your good. And so that you have any kids? That as your kids watch you, your children watch you, they're going to see the pattern of good works. Right. That are according to God's commandments. Bring you it understand it. Bring it out. Now, do you not know that as a child of Israel, you are a temple of God? Read. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Spirit of God is the Word of God. As you learn it, you recite it, you apply it to your life, You that Spirit dwells in you because now you're an example like we just spoke about, right? Read. If any man defile the temple of God. So defilement goes into doing things outside of God's laws. Right. Your body is your temple, right? Now, on the back of a, on the front of a cigarillo, pack it. Is there not a Surgeon General warning that says Surgeon General says if you use this lung cancer, emphysema uh, 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 bronchitis all this other crazy stuff that's going to kill you. Cancer. These are the things that when we smoke weed happen to our body. But you know what? A lot of times our people say well I'm in a lower state anyway let me just smoke and get but what does God say again? What the, both how we feel, the Bible is written how it is written. We as God's children must keep God's laws. Well, At the end of the day, right? Read. If any man defiles the temple of God by smoking weed or any other thing defilement, prostitution, a whore, whore, being a whoremonger, being a whore, you understand? Not, not keeping any of God's laws is defilement at the at the root of it. Read. 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 If any man defile his temple, read. Him shall God destroy. What is God going to do as a punishment? Shall God destroy. God is going to destroy us with diseases, atmospheres that breed of evil. We're going to be evil within ourselves. We're going to teach evil. And our evil is going to be the death of our people. That's right. Aren't we a dead people anyway? Now what? Let's get, that in, let's get that in Proverbs. What does it mean to be dead? Do you know? To be absent from the body. What do you say, sis? April. Uh, my sister right here, what's your name? No, you are. What's your name? What does it mean to be dead? you never been dead. You said to be absent from the body. All right, this is what we're going to do. 
We're going to give, and this is why we come out to our people, because doctrines have been taught in the church. You understand? But what we're going to do, sis, book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 16. We're going to show you, according to the word of God, what it really means to be dead. Because you can see, in this neighborhood, there are a lot of living people out here. But what does the Bible consider dead? Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 16. And this is something you will never hear in your Christian church. Why? Pastors are only there to take your money. Right. To mess up your communities and continue to create dead bodies in our community. Right. Read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. So the man that, oh, I'm sorry. Let's, 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 uh, Proverbs. I don't read it, I'm listening. Go ahead. Uh, we want to make sure you can get it so she can read Proverbs it. Because I don't think she ever seen it. Proverbs 21, verse 16. So the Bible is going to define what it means to be dead. Because we think that you are six feet under in a box with a nice suit on, you know, chain on your neck, just laying with your hands crossed over your chest. We think that that's the definition of dead. God is going to show us what really being dead is. You ever seen the show uh, The Walking Dead? Oh, oh, I think it's A&E. Or whatever we know, we know. So those people are dead, absent from the body, but their body's still moving, right? So what are they lacking as those zombies? What are they lacking? What are they lacking? You got it? All right, here we go. Read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. Did, did you hear that, sis? What's, the, uh, what's your name? April. April. Did you hear that? It says the man that wandereth leaves... The way of understanding. How do we get understanding of what God requires of us? By going where? To the Bible. Right. So our people have wandered away from the Bible. Right. So now we don't have understanding of how we should carry ourselves. We are the royalty, the gods on the face of this earth. That's right. We are the right. nobility. But we have wandered away from understanding. Right. We shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So dead people are those that have no understanding according to God's law. Yes, right. That's what the Bible says. So when it comes to Egyptology, right. when it comes to Nuwabianism, when it comes to African spirituality, right. when it comes to Islam, Buddhism, Taoism, all these false religions on the face of the earth, we have wandered away from the understanding of what God wants. Right. Because guess what? If I ask a black Buddhist what is his nationality, he still won't be able to tell me. Right. He up. doesn't know what land he comes from. He doesn't know who his maker is. He has gone to another man's religion to try to substantiate who he is and his being. Gee. We've gone to a fat Chinese man to tell us who we are as black people. Something is wrong. Read that again. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding uh -huh. shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So dead people walking are those that have strayed away from keeping God's commandments. Right. Right. Now, how does that look in 2020? How does it look for the last thousands of years? Those that wander away from the way of understanding. Get Isaiah uh, 1. Get Isaiah 1. It's all right, because now you're getting true understanding. That's right. You understand that? Matter of fact, uh, anybody got a pen for the sister so she can take notes? If, if, that, if you can't keep up with us with the flipping, you can at least write notes. You see what I'm saying? All right, say that again. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Bring it up. You on Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. So this is what wandering away from understanding looks like in today's time. Read. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 uh -huh. The ox knoweth its owner So now we talking about animals what, What's going on? It says the ox knows his owner So a dumb animal at least knows Who his master is right? Bring it up. It, he knows who Feeds him, he knows who takes care of him Right? Read on And the ass his master's crib A donkey can be taken hundreds of miles Away from his home but if you give him time, he's going to get back because he knows where his resources are. He knows where his homeland is. Hey, but now God is going to make a comparison to people. Dumb animals being compared to people. Read. But Israel. But Israel. Who is Israel? Israel is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It's that, what is this going to say about Israel? Read. Doth not know my people. 
does not consider. So what does Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans not know? What is it that we don't know? We don't know our God-given name. We don't know our homeland. We don't know who our master is. We don't know what our master requires of us. You understand that? So we have wandered away from the understanding of our master. And because of wandering away from our master, we have now been taken away from our homeland. Right. Now, let's get that in Deuteronomy 28. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Let's make sense of all of this. What do you call this? When you look at auction blocks, being uh, hit with a rod, being in submission, what, is, what, what do we call that? Destroying our black. But what was the codified term of destroying black people? Uh, 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 slavery. slavery. Now, is slavery in the Bible? No. Slavery is not in the Bible. Never heard of slavery in the Bible. Okay. Let's, you know. let's get it. Let's get it. Deuteronomy uh, 28 15. You know. Because we're going to show you cause and effect. Oh, what's your name again? I'm sorry. <laughs> Angie. Angie. We're going to show you cause and effect. So when we wander away from God, certain things happen to us. Get that Deuteronomy 28, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Okay. No. Read. But it shall come to pass. Things will happen, read. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we wander from God's understanding, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. So God is going to give us instructions on how to live according to his word. How to gain understanding. But it says if we don't listen, read. And his statutes uh -huh. which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, Sister Angie, are curses a good thing or a bad thing? Simple answer. Curses. It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. So you said slavery is not in the Bible. Let's get Deuteronomy 28, verse 41. Let's, Get out. let's jump straight there. Verse 41. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 41. Uh -huh. Thou yeah. shalt beget sons and daughters. So did not the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans have sons and daughters? You know. Did we not? We still yeah. here today. We the children of the slaves. Read. But thou shalt not enjoy them. Why won't we be able to enjoy? We see our children out here right now throwing the football on the scooter. How are we not able to enjoy our children? Read. For they shall go into captivity. They shall go into what? For they shall go into captivity. What's another word for captivity, sis? Slavery. But how did we go into slavery? Verse 68. Read it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So, it's a lot being said right there. Do you know what Egypt means, sis? It says the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again. What, what, what happened to the Israelites in Egypt under Pharaoh? Do you know? Let's get that in Exodus. It, and, and you see, right now, I know, I know it's a lot, but guess what? This is how we get understanding according to the Bible. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Let's get that. Here we go. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. And then we go oh. right back to Deuteronomy, okay? Read. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So God says he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. But what is Egypt known for? Read. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage, which is what? Slavery. That's what the Bible is saying Egypt represents. Because the Israelites were there in slavery. Right. Now, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, and put in slavery where Egypt is. Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh-huh. No. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. How? How do we go into slavery? How do we come into slavery over here? By what? By what? Let's read it. Read it from the top again. Oh, don't put that camera on. And the Lord, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord our God for disobedience brought us into slavery. How? With ships. With what? Ships. With ships. Yes, the right. only people on the face of this earth that were brought into slavery on ships are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes, yes, right. Which proves out of the Bible that we are the Israelites. Right. That we are God's chosen people who have strayed away from his understanding. 
Right. And now we wander in the congregation of the dead, thinking that we're all kinds of different things, our nationality off, the way that we carry ourselves is off. We have wandered out of the way of understanding. But watch this. More explanation comes. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. So Moses says, the way that you're reading it and the way you're hearing it right now is how it happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. What will we not see anymore? Isaiah 1 and... You said what? Isaiah what? We were just at Isaiah 1 and 3, right? It says the ox knows his own and the ass his master's crib. These are the things we don't know about. But what is this talking about? It says we shall see it no more again. What is that it? Let's get it. You got it? The it is our homeland. What's our homeland? You say Jerusalem? Let's get the proof out of Galatians 4. Go to Galatians. It's New Testament. All right? Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Uh -huh. so, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Jerusalem. Read. Which is the mother of us all. So the next time anybody asks a so-called black man, what is the motherland? The Bible says Jerusalem, Bring it up. which is in Northeast Africa. Wait, that's, that's right. your homeland, black man. Wait. Right. And when you, when somebody asks you a nationality, you can say, I'm an Israelite. Wait. Right. Israel is actually a place. Wait. Right. Black is not a place. Wait. Right. African American is two different continents. No specific points. No. We, we all over the place. We have wandered out of the way of understanding. Right. You see that? Matter of fact, your father. What's your last name? You said what name? Banks. Banks. Now, all that means is, long time ago, when we came over here on these slave ships, your people were taken to the Banks plantation. Right. Because right. along with losing our history and heritage, we also lost our name, right? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 60. Uh -huh. no. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, uh -huh. by the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. We will not see our homeland Jerusalem anymore again. You understand that? Read. And there uh -huh. ye shall be sold unto your enemy. So once we got off the slave ship, let me get that sign over there. Once we got off the slave ships, Charleston, South Carolina was the slave port, right? You see these slave routes right here? The Bible says we were going to go into slavery on ships. Landed right here in Charleston, South Carolina. And it says we will be what? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. So we were showing pictures of auction blocks just earlier, right? That's what was going on in Charleston, South Carolina. Right. Pro Bible prophecy has been fulfilled in front of our eyes and in pictures, in movies, documentaries, and yet we still don't know who we are. It says that we're going to be what? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And then our enemies will put their last names on us to show that we were their property. Read. For bond men uh -huh. and bond women. For slave man and slave woman. The Bible says if you are the children of the slaves, you are an Israelite. Uh -huh. right. That means that you are royalty with right. power with God. Right. Prince right. with power with God. That's Princess right. with power with God. But you know what? Those that put us in slavery knew who we were. Right. And they were de they were they were hard down determined to take that away from us. You understand that? Read on. And no man shall buy you. Now th that's the key to that verse right there. It says, No man shall buy you. Now, they were there were free black men, free black women. There were people like uh, Harriet Tubman who went and made people free. But it says no man shall buy you. What does that mean? No man will be able to redeem us out of that current captivity, that captivity. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. 
IUIC, we deliver the truth.